Thank you, thank you. Let me first start off by saying how humbled I am to be sitting in front or speaking in front of a crowd like this. I was flipping through the register last night of the attendees, and this clearly is the who's who of marketers, agencies, and designers. And so for someone like myself, who loves digital, uh, the opportunity to speak to a crowd like this is thrilling. What I was hoping to do today is just tell you a little bit about our transformational journey. Um, our transformational journey, not only as a company, but also as an experience maker. And share transparently some of the lessons that we're learning at Coca-Cola, and ultimately how we believe those lessons will transcend to other organizations. I hope everyone in the audience knows Coke. It is an iconic brand, and we've spent uh, over 100 years making sure that you had awareness to our brand. And what's interesting is, in the digital age, we're feeling an, uh, an opposing force emerging, and it'll be interesting to hear if you would do as well. In the traditional marketing model, it was all about awareness, reach, and frequency. In the digital world, it is about personalization. And so those, at times, are somewhat opposing forces. And that's why we need great partners like Adobe to help us enable that. And what we found is by pulling at both of these forces and bringing them together, there's something magical there. There's something magical that we can create and create with our consumers. Now, a quick history lesson about the company. So we began in 1886 with a single product. We quickly took that product and moved it around various geographies, and then ultimately, we began to surround our core product, Coca-Cola, with other brands in the portfolio. And then we essentially spent the last 30 years perfecting the distribution model, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But we are entering a new chapter as a company. We're entering a chapter of digital transformation. And that chapter is a little bit different for us because it requires us to deepen our relationship with our consumers, to perfect the idea of mass personalization, which as we all know is not easy to do, and to bridge the gap between the digital and the physical world. And we have always historically operated in the physical world. Now to do that, we've organized ourselves around four areas. And those four areas are the experiences we create with our consumers and our customers. Customers for us are retailers, and we have 24 million partners around the world. We focus on operational transformation, which is just making us better as a team, more efficient, more productive. We're focused on disrupting ourselves before others do it. And you can see lots of signals in the marketplace where that's, that's starting to emerge as a, as, a, as a greater area of interest for us. But we're very focused on new business models and, and evolving the company. And last but not least, the hardest journey, portion of our journey that we're currently on is the cultural transformation. Because we have to evolve, and as we know, human behavior is not an easy thing to evolve. Now, a bit about scale. We, we serve 1.5 billion consumers a week. They drink just shy of 2 billion beverages a day, so 14 billion beverages a week. They do that in 200 markets around the world. And this is my favorite stupid fact that you'll hopefully take away. If you do the math, depending on which population number you use, we interact with 18% of humanity every single week. It's a huge opportunity and a huge honor for us. Now, here's the challenge. These consumers are unique individuals. They are not the same. They have different preferences. They like to engage with us differently, whether that's through, e uh, or through mobile, websites, voice. And ultimately, it's not about us. We're fortunate to be part of their lives, but the experiences they're creating are with their loved ones, their families and friends. We're just a portion, a small portion of that. Now, we have this saying inside the company, which is kiss the past hello, and this is somewhat of an insider secret, but our heritage over the last 132 years is incredibly important to every single thing we do. And we follow it and look at it religiously. And the saying, kiss the past hello, is just our way of saying, learn from the past. Learn from your successes, learn from your failures, and pull a little bit of that forward in everything that you do. Now, if I took you into Atlanta, into our archives, which is really cool, you would see images going back to the beginning of the company. Images around what it means to enjoy a Coke, the uplift, the refreshment that it gives you every single day. But images that create 
the first forms of experiences. And we'll talk about how that's evolving. A quick example, though, that brings it a little bit more to modern times is an ad we ran in the 1970s. This is one of our, at the time, most iconic ads. It was a guy who finished a bike ride. I did not know the Peloton reference was gonna be done this morning, so this is ironic. But it was a guy who finished a bike ride. He's hot, it's a perfect time to have a nice cold Coca-Cola and to take a shower with refreshment. Pulling that story forward, we modernized it. So this is a more recent version. Guy, still hot, cooling down after a workout, enjoying an ice cold Coca-Cola, but now there's something interesting. We've taken that story and we've expanded it. There's a second guy. So we've changed it. Here's an example of a woman who's cooling down as well. A lot of people take bottles, and hopefully you do as well, but take some form of bottle and put it against your head on a hot day. We've taken images like that and we've pulled that same story forward, that same point of refreshment that we, that we bring to the markets, but you can see the difference now. You can see the sensorial aspect of the image. You can almost feel the condensation on a bottle on a hot day against the cheek. And so we're working very hard and even still imagery to improve the experiences. And what's fascinating, what's changed fundamentally for us with the advent of digital is we're creating thousands of images every single time we look at a campaign. And historically, these images would probably have gone to waste. They would have been archived, housed somewhere, and not used. But in the, in the digital world, we're posting these on social media, we're putting them into many of our display ads, and we're carrying these stories forward. And what's beautiful about them is, frankly, they don't look like the company created them. They look like consumers created the content. And that's really important to us. Here's an example of the original sketch. So this is the sketch in 1915 that won the pitch to be the bottle, the iconic bottle. Again, we take that original element and we pull it forward. Here's a 1970s version of a similar sketch, the silhouette of the bottle, if you will. And now you can see once again, we're starting to use technology and digital technology in particular to really bring that experience to life. And again, bring those sensorial aspects into the ads. Now today is a different story. Today, everything we do centers around our packaging. And our packaging is incredibly important to us because that is the physical, um, physical point of the relationship with the consumer. Here's a simple example of city cans that we launched recently in, in, uh, in China. Every one of these cans, every face and reference on these cans um, is tied directly to a landmark of a different city in China. And what's cool about these is that the consumers who pick them up can see something about themselves in these cans because they're familiar with those cities. They can liken themselves to them. But we said, look, that's only one dimension. Could we push it further? So here's a simple example of how we tried to bring the cans to life. No one can stop me when I taste a feeling. Nothing could ever bring me I'll give you one that's a little closer to home. Hopefully you're all familiar with the love can done in the Australian market. Interesting story behind this is from the point of um, idea, which you can see being scribbled in the top left, to the point that it reached a consumer's hands took 11 days, amazingly fast. But again, we pushed the experience further. We said, what could hide behind the love can? Love notes, secret messages to others. And so we built the ability to send love messages to your friends and family just by scanning the can. Again, taking a traditional experience and pushing it as far as we could possibly push it. And for us, this really was our Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Tomorrow, thank you. That, that's not my creation, by the way. I'll give somebody else credit for the brilliance. But tomorrow, it's how much further can we push our experiences as experience makers? Again, grounding in our packaging. And the big fundamental shift for us is that we can't do this alone. We want to invite the community to participate with us and to really push this model and to reimagine what an experience could be for a consumer packaged good company. Now, our consumers take it on upon their behalf to do this every single day. Everything you see here is consumer created content. Ten thousands of, or sorry, tens of thousands of these are happening each day. My personal favorite is the guy in the middle at the top. I call him Can Man. I don't know what his real name is but he likes to run around and film himself in a Coca-Cola can, and it's an honor for us. 
Now, if I took you into the design labs in Atlanta, again, or around the design labs we have around the world, I'd be able to show you what we're doing with the physical package. I'd be able to show you the evolutions that we're making with the bottle caps, what we're doing with labels, how we're changing packaging. We're even thinking about how straws can play a bigger role in the experience and the experience creation. Here's a quick example. This is a prototype we built, which is somewhat unusual for us. Everyone recognizes a fountain. The usual gesture is to fill your cup on a fountain. We created a fountain that um, replenished your data allowance for a teenager. Again, same notion, use of a device, putting it under a fountain, but reimagining the experience and thinking about it fundamentally differently. Now, we got together with Adobe, I guess about a year ago, and we said, what if we embrace the community of designers in a different way? What if we created a brief that you could tweet and invite everyone into our world and to help us imagine what we might do with the Tokyo Olympics in 2020 and how we might bring the country, the brand, and the Olympic spirit to life. Let me just show you the brief. One of the cooler things we've done in a while, but what came out of it was something magical. What came out of it was over 900 submissions. And these submissions varied greatly. Some were just simple scores of music. Some were two and three dimensional experiences that were created, hand-drawn experiences and film. And for us, this brought to life the power of the community and the power of the partnership we needed to establish. And as you can see, lots of this creative work is truly breathtaking. Now, what's interesting is we also looked at what's behind it. So all of that, that, those experiences we're creating on Adobe platforms, and you recognize these, I'm sure, many people in the room, obviously, because we use them every day. But what's beautiful about it is you can look at the history of how things were created. And at any given moment, you could stop any one of these, and it could be a new logo or ad campaign for the company. But we were fortunate enough to see the journey that the designers had gone on. I'm going to share one last one with you. It's our personal favorite. You saw a glimpse of it in the original presentation. Um, but it's something that we thought truly embodied the spirit of the Olympics, the country, and ultimately, humbly, uh, our brand as well. And I'll let it play in silence because I think the work speaks for itself. And so what you can see is one individual's perspective on how those three come together. And for us, it was quite powerful. And I'll leave you with this thought. Coca-Cola is no different than any other company in the way that it's finding its way through this digital transformation journey. We fundamentally believe that it can only be done through partnership with the community, the people in this room, the people on the live stream, uh, some of which are open, up in the middle of the night, which is always interesting. Um, but we can only do it with the community and by working together, similar to the Peloton reference earlier. Um, and we hope, ultimately, by doing this, that we can earn the right to continue to serve and serve more of the 1.5 billion consumers every day, that we earn the right to participate in their lives and participate in just a small way that hopefully brings uplift and refreshment to them. And ultimately, if we're successful, we believe that will help them live happier and longer lives. Thank you very much.